Greetings, my dear lower life forms. Today, I'm going to saturate your gray matter with my well-oiled knowledge on mixing flesh tones, thereby infusing it into your turkey. I will then baste it with my greatness and place it in the oven to slow roast until I'm certain you are juicy. Now, he thinks he's making sense, but we all know he isn't. Due to some recent injuries that seem to be catching up to him, he has been going on all week about some very crazy things. Not the least of which is him believing he is Lord Helmet from the 1987 movie Spaceballs and Bob Ross. It's kind of freaking me out, actually. He has also been trying to prove to me he can still control his teleportation after his last teleportation incident. Trust me when I say this will probably be a very weird experience for all of us. I will start the video with a demonstration of me mixing colors on my palette, followed by a flawless portrait painting performance on the very same palette. In this manner, I will meld my teachings into your ass. Trust me when I tell you, this video will make you question everything that you have learned thus far about painting and about your life. To keep it simple, I will use a limited amount of colors on my palette. I place my colors from dark to light for organizational purposes, of course. Here I will be using ivory black, ultramarine blue, cadmium red light, yellow okra, and titanium white, bitches. It is good to know how to mix solely with the primary colors. In this manner, you will fully understand the limitations of each color, and you will more easily be able to slay any buttholes that get in your way. I start by mixing secondary colors to more easily be able to spontaneously mix between colors when I am in the heat of a vicious painting battle. So let's start. Yellow and red make orange, so we mix orange. Yellow and blue make green, so we mix green. Blue and red make purple, so we mix purple. Notice how I am mixing with the back of my palette knife. Yes, it is very counterintuitive, but it is also counter stupid. You see, my dear peasants, being able to press the palette knife down flat prevents an unnecessary paint buildup that would otherwise occur on the palette knife if you were to mix with the other side. Now that we have our basic primary and secondary colors prepared and organized on our palette, we will now proceed to mixing the flesh tones. I'm about to show you a method of mixing colors and palette organization that will literally make your head explode with the force of a thousand suns if you even attempted to understand its greatness. This explosion in turn would create a black hole and our entire planet would be sucked into it in the blink of an eye. I will be mixing six piles of color that I will be able to mix between when painting. I always start with the darkest color and work my way up to the light. The first color I will mix will be the darkest shadow that might be found on our subject. In this case, the subject will be a portrait sketch that I simply made up. I take some black and some red and mix between the two to make a dark red. I refrain from using any yellow at first because it would lighten the value too much. By value, I mean how light or dark something is. The idea is to push our range of values and to maximize the color saturation of each value. A good dark will be able to have a lot of color in it while maintaining its dark value. I have found the Michael Harding's brand of cadmium reds to be most useful in this. I continue on to our next dark value, and this time my boundless genius prompts me to include just a touch of yellow and red in the mixture to slowly raise its light value. This is where the orange pile comes in handy. You see, my simpletons, I am saving you time by not having to mix as much because you have already mixed an orange. This can be used to come closer faster to the color that you would prefer. I also find pushing the red at this stage is necessary, so I add just a tiny bit more than what my orange currently contains. Shh, don't tell anyone. Now, to mix the third color value, I normally switch to blue over black. This is simply a matter of preference, and either color can be used at this stage. I want this value to be as light as I can get without adding any white to it. I start with the blue and add some orange. I slowly adjust the value to make it darker by adding some more blue. I want it slightly darker still, but I also want a bit more red, so I choose to add some of my purple I mixed earlier. Almost having sealed the fate of this color with my genius, I go for a touch of red, and then tragedy strikes. Bouncing back quickly, I proceeded to mix the shit out of that color and promptly executed my most skilled palette knife spread technique so your ass can better see this perfectly mixed flesh tone. 
If you run out of any secondary color, just mix a new one. Trust me, it is worth your time to do so, especially once we get to the painting process. I grab some blue, some orange, some red, and this time I introduce some white into the mix. Let me take some time and talk to you about the importance of the type of white you use in flesh tones. Though I am using the Michael Harding's Titanium brand of white, I also like his Kremnitz white, which contains lead. Now, Kremnitz is a very opaque and thick white, whereas Titanium, depending on the brand, is thinner and in this case, a bit lighter and cleaner than the Kremnitz. Both work great for flesh tones. I would recommend Kremnitz as it has a very desirable texture to it, but be warned, it is toxic and you do not want to get it on yourself, otherwise, death. We continue with our next lighter value, which includes all the basic colors we have already used, but in different proportions. I add just a touch of blue, some red, and yellow, and a greater amount of white this time. Now this is important. When mixing, you want to consider two things, its light value and its color value. We could throw paint thickness into the mix, but for the sake of simplicity, just worry about how light it is and what type of color it has. Use blue or black to darken, and use yellow and red to color. If you want a more blue value, well then, add blue, you dumbass. I now proceed to the lightest flesh tone, which is simply yellow, red, and white. I do not add any blue at this stage like the morons do. If I did, the light value would be lowered, and I would be promptly defeated by my many enemies. This doesn't necessarily mean I need to use this color if I don't want, though I find it works great with highlights. I also use this to mix between the previous piles of color to form the lighter structures closer to the highlights. I will now demonstrate for you the value of this type of color setup. I am not going to talk as much as I normally do about the drawing process as I am about my genius level thought process of mixing as I mix these little bitches together in the interest of forming yet another effortless masterpiece, this time on my palette. I will usually block in the drawing with the darkest dark, which would be the red and black I mixed first. Once I have the base drawing down, I proceed to work from dark to light, having already created the piles of paint with the correct field color, that is, the general range of color I will be working in, I proceed to choose a light value and I always spice it up with a bit of color. When mixing between the piles of paint, I normally do so to get the correct light value. I'll then add a touch of color to it by habit. In this way, I make sure all my color mixtures and transitions have a solid color to them. I usually consider whether I need to warm the color up or cool it down. Perhaps it needs to be more green, maybe more purple. Happy bush. Remember my creatures of paint. There is color in transitional tones. We've all seen paints that looked grayed out. The colors seem dead, and it is obvious the painter chose to blend heavily on the canvas without paying any attention to the transitional shapes and color. Always add color to your mixture once you have mixed a light value and do not be lazy in mixing specific transitions, especially in the later stages of your work. However, in the beginning, it is okay to blend more without worrying about the color. Just worry about the light value and try to get the drawing impression. As you watch me paint, notice how I mix between the piles and then tweak them to the color I want. I have already done most of the heavy mixing, so I don't need to constantly mix the same colors from scratch. I also have a much wider range of colors to tweak with because I mix the secondary color set in the beginning from the primary colors we started with. This method also has another very important advantage. Because I have mixed orange, purple, and green, I can better compare the colors with each other while they are on my palette. Since they are still basic colors, however, the palette is not in danger of being overcomplicated. It really helps having these colors to look at so we can more accurately see how far from orange, red, or green any flesh tone on our palette truly is. We also have the options of making things more orange, purple, or green without having to mix yellow and red, red and blue, or blue and yellow. Essentially, this method cuts out that process and is more straight to the point which enables us to be more spontaneous with our mixing. This increases our painting speed to levels that would explode your face. One quick note about medium. It is also important to point out that I am not using any medium in this video and that is because I am doing a fast sketch on a slick surface. If I used a thinning agent such as my usual walnut oil, the paint would become too thin and the palette would poke through. I could use the medium after the paint is built up, but I chose not to. When working in the darks, I stay within the range of colors without white. The temptation to use white to lighten dark shadows is strong, especially when you first start painting. Avoid this, because if you add white to your dark shadow, 
you'll lose the transparency that makes them recede and enables the light areas to pop in contrast. This is why I mix these three piles of paint without white. I use color to lighten their value and push them as far as I can go without them being overly saturated with color. In another video, I will show you how I further push these dark midtones lighter without using white. Be a pussy. It requires two extra colors, but I did not want to add them in this video because if I showed you, your head would literally explode from the excess knowledge I would have granted your ass. Patience, my morons. I will gladly imprint my extraordinary knowledge upon your brain lumps in due time. But for now, be content with these not insignificant chunks of knowledge. Now there is obviously a very wide range of flesh tones out there, and I've covered some that fall in more general range. I'll do videos on others in the future. Uh, just keep in mind that there are many different great ways of mixing paint, and this is just one of them. Wrong. This way is far superior than all other ways you might be unfortunate enough to stumble upon. If it wasn't superior, I wouldn't be here today, serenading you with my most glorious wisdom. Now if you'll excuse me, it's time I take my leave and simultaneously prove his ass wrong about my teleportation talent I specced into. Bitter donkey, sugar tit. <laughs> Vindicated, bitch. <laughs> Vindicated, bitch. Idiot. <laughs> okay. Do you have a key? Are. Go, quick. Ashley, come with me. No, I'm not walking. <laughs> Hurry, go.